Welcome back to our Pure Fantasy Intro Lax Scarf Knit Along. In the last episode, we went over the supplies, casting on, and the bottom triangles, which are the foundation to starting the scarf. In this episode, we're gonna do tier one, where I show you how to do the right and left triangles and the rectangles in between, and tier two, where I show you how to do those rectangles, and we finish off doing the top triangles, bind off, and then we get to blocking this fantastic Pure Fantasy scarf. If you still need supplies, check out OneBigHappy.com. You can get the printed pattern and all the yarn you'll need to finish this project. Let's get started. So in the last episode, we finished off by making this first triangle that you see right here. I've gone on and finished the other three, so I have a total of four triangles on my needle. I want to show you where we're at in the scarf. So this is where, we've at, where we're at. We finished these here. Now we need to make this side triangle right here. This is the beginning of tier one in the pattern. And we do have a diagram with arrows showing you exactly where you're going to be starting. So we have our pattern. We have our little clicker here to keep us on track. I've got my magnetic strip. My pattern's ready to go. I am on the wrong side of the work. And we are on row one. And we are making the left side triangle. The wrong side of our work is the side that's going to show us these pearl bumps right here. The right side of the work has the little heart-shaped knit stitches that you can see here. To begin with, on row one, we simply knit one stitch and turn. So I'm going to knit that one stitch and then turn. I'm also going to click my row counter and move my magnet down on my pattern keeper to row two. Now on row two, we see a new symbol here. It is KFB. KFB means knit through the front and the back of the same stitch. So we're basically increasing right here. And I'll show you how that's done. Now we're on the right side of our work. We have one stitch on our left needle and all the rest of the stitches are remaining on the right needle. Now we are going to do our KFB, which is knit through the front and the back. So to do that, we knit into the stitch like normal. But instead of sliding that stitch off of the needle, we leave it on. We scoop around through the back, and then we knit through the back loop of that same stitch. And now we've gone from one stitch to two. Click and move our marker down and turn. So if you ever forget to click your clicker, or you're not sure you're on the right row, one of the things that you can do is just count how many stitches are on your needle and refer back to your pattern. Each row of the pattern changes by one number, so you should be able to find out where you're at in your pattern if you get off. So when you've gone from one stitch to two stitches, you know that you've done it right. Now we're gonna turn. We are on row three. We are going to knit one. Now I do want to point something out here. We are on the wrong side of our work, but the first stitch is a knit stitch. And the reason for that knit stitch on the wrong side of the work is because we are creating a ridge on the side of our work that you will see right here. It gives it this consistency all along the side of our work. We'll do that as we continue going on both sides. So you'll see this is the triangle that we're working on here. But by doing that knit stitch for the very first stitch, it gives it this ridge. It's just a decorative touch that we've added on there. Our next, so after we knit one, then we're going to purl two. This purl two is joining our new triangle to the triangle that is down below. And we are going to purl those two together. So to purl those two together, you slide your needle through two stitches. You wrap your yarn around and you purl those. And now we turn again. Now we're back to the right side of our work. We need to click clicker. And now we are on row four. We are going to knit one. And now we're going to make one using a bar increase. So now for the M1, we're doing an increase. We're going to do a bar increase. So we're going to knit into this stitch right down here. 
And to do that, you take your left needle and scoop under. Now we're gonna knit into the back of this bar. And I found that going forward and looping my needle to the back is the best way to capture that stitch. And then we knit through the back loop like that. And then we knit that last stitch. And now we have finished row four. Click and turn. So this is what we're doing here. We're creating this triangle and we're going back and forth right through here. We are on row five. We're gonna knit one. And then we're gonna purl one. And then we're joining our new work here to the old triangle below by purling two together. And sliding up and then turning again. It's a little bumpy looking right now, but as we go along, you're gonna see this fabric right here in this triangle. You're gonna see that building up to this triangle and it'll start looking more and more like this. It's just a little bumpy right now because there wasn't anything there before and now we're building that up. I click my clicker, move my magnet. Now I'm on row six. I'm gonna knit two, make one. Okay, so we have two, we have three stitches. Right here we have three stitches. We're gonna turn this into four stitches by knitting one knitting two, and now we're gonna do that same bar increase. Again, I take my left needle, scoop it under to get it on this needle, and then I come from behind and flip it over like this so that I have my needle in position to knit through that back loop like that. And then we're gonna knit that last one. So now we have, we went from three to four, and now we're gonna turn click and we are on row seven. Sometimes with all these turning, your yarn might get tangled up in your circular needles if you're using those. Feel free when you get to the ending point to kind of straighten things out, get yourself back in order. It's, it's normal to do that. We just want to make sure that we have our uh, working yarn out to the side so we don't have to struggle with that. So now we're on row seven. We're gonna knit that first stitch because we're making that edge look nice and tidy. Now we're gonna purl. There's one, two. And at this point, you're gonna to start to see this gap. It's gonna be more clear at this because you've got a little bit more fabric underneath here. The purl two together is combining these two stitches. So that's kind of just a visual cue of, oh, that's where I need to purl those two together because of that gap. And then we'll purl those two. And turn again. Click and go to row eight. So here we have four stitches. We're going to knit three. We're gonna do that same bar increase again by taking our needle under and then coming through here and knitting through the back side of that and knit one. Now you can really see where this triangle is starting to appear connected to this triangle. We've got a little bit more fabric established there. So now we are on row nine. We're gonna knit the first stitch and then purl. And we are purling three. And then we're back to this gap again. We're gonna purl those two together. And that closes up that gap. And then we turn again. And then we click our clicker. And we are on row 10. So here, you're starting to see a pattern. We're kind of increasing one every time. So now we're knitting four. And we're gonna make one using that bar. 
and knitting through the back loop of that. By doing that, it's twisting that bar and we're not getting that big of a gap there. It's kind of just closes it up and makes it a little bit more decorative. And then we knit that last stitch and turn. Now we are in row 11. We're gonna knit one and purl. And we've got that gap again. And I'm gonna purl those two together, close up that gap. And turn again. I always like to take a look and straighten out my stitches every time I turn back to the right side because it gives me a visual to see where I'm at and make sure that I am, like all my stitches are going in the right direction, that I'm still on target, I'm still on track. Don't forget to click our clicker, move our magnet. I'm on row 12. Now we're gonna knit five. I'm back to my bar increase here. Slide my needle under. This one I like to scoop around and go through. I'm knitting through that back part of that. And then I knit the last one. Now you can really see where we're at. We're on row 13. Here is the bottom triangle. Here's the triangle that we're working on now. So let's go ahead and finish this off here. We've got row 13. We are going to knit one. And now we are purling and purling five. One, two, three. I also want to show something as we're here right now with this yarn. Um, I talked about it before. The fibers in this yarn are spun, um, are dyed first and then spun into the yarn. You will see this thickness pop up. It'll go from thick to thin. This is where they're changing out their colors and adding more. As you can tell, we've kind of changed from pink to orange and it's getting really dark This is, and saturated with the color. That's what gives this yarn its unique rustic look and I really like that. Don't worry about that messing with your gauge. It will all work its way out and especially in the end when we block it, you'll see how it comes out nice and and uh, even, but I just want you to know when you see this, just keep working, it's okay, it's not hurting anything. It's part of how the, the uniqueness of this yarn. So now I'm down to purling my last two together. And look at that, we have finished that triangle. So these are the slip stitches that we made when we were making the the bottom triangles, we're gonna pick those up and start to make this rectangle right here. We need to reset our row counter. Back to zero. I've got my pattern ready with my magnet here. Now I'm on row one with the right or with the wrong side facing me. We didn't turn after that last section. Now we are going to pick up seven stitches. Like I said, seven is the magic number for this project. Go back and check and make sure that you have seven stitches on your needle now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Some people feel comfortable putting a stitch marker here because that is separating that section. Now we're picking up seven more to start the middle, tri uh, middle rectangle. So we, these are the stitches you can kind of see them there that we slipped when we were making the bottom triangle. These are what we're gonna pick up. To pick those up, we're gonna scoop our needle under, wrap the yarn around, and pull it through. I wanna do that seven times. And there should be seven slipped stitches on this edge of our bottom triangle. Okay, I've got four, five, six, and, ooh, that one kind of shrunk up a little bit on me, 
but there it, there it is, right there. I go. Well, it's a little fidgety. There we go, I got it. Okay. And wrap around. And grab that. Okay, double count. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So now I have picked up my seven edge stitches and now we're gonna turn. That was considered row one, just by picking up those stitches was considered row one. Row two, we are going to knit all seven of these stitches. So I'm gonna adjust my needles a little bit. Okay, so we've picked up all of these stitches on this side of the triangle. Now I see here that I have split my yarn. I wanna go ahead and get that fixed now. Whenever you've split your yarn, it looks like this where it, there's this little loop here. What we do, uh, what you can do is just slide it off. There's our loop. I'm gonna fix it by just putting it right back on. I haven't, um, now it looks like a real loop right there. Okay, so now by picking up those stitches, that was row one, we are on row two, and we're simply just knitting all seven of these stitches. all seven of these. And then turn. And we are now on row three. So on row three, we slip one and purl five. So there's one two, three, four, five, and then we purl two together. And we are gonna be purling one from our rectangle and one from the triangle underneath, and we're cinching that up. Okay, so we have picked up all of these stitches along the edge, and now we are on row two where we're purling two stitches together. We're purling one from this rectangle that we're creating right now to the one uh, of, the, of the bottom triangle underneath. So that's the two that we're gonna be purling together right here. There's our bottom triangle. This is the rectangle that we're building now. So I'm gonna purl those two together. That's what incorporates those. Once I purl those two together, then I turn again. Now I'm back to the right side of our work. So we have this gap here, this is our rectangle. We need to click our clicker. When you get to row four, rows four through 15, all you're doing is repeating what we did in rows two and three. So anybody that knows me knows that I love fireworks. And my favorite firework is called Pure Fantasy and it's full of lots of color. And when I saw this yarn and I designed this pattern, I really got to thinking, oh my gosh, this reminds me of that firework. So that's how I came up with the name Pure Fantasy for this scarf. And I was lucky enough that we were able to incorporate it into this pattern. And I, I just, it just adds that little personal touch for me and I really like that. At this point, you can really start to see the direction, the fabric, everything looks starting to get a little less crazy, a little less jumbled. It's, it's actually starting to form the weave pattern. Okay, so now we're going to knit our seven, and this is row 14. So we got this, and now we're going to turn we're on row 15. We slip the first stitch and we are going to purl our five. Okay, we're one stitch before the gap. We're gonna go ahead and purl these two together. Now on this one, we are not going to turn. We're gonna purl these two, and now we're gonna pick up these seven stitches along this side of the triangle, and we're gonna continue repeating what I just showed you. You're gonna do that 
for this triangle here and this triangle here. So you're going to repeat that two more times. So we've just finished making all of our rectangles in tier one and we're ready to start the right side triangle. So let me show you again where we're at. It kind of matches up. I can lay it right on top of there. We've just finished these rectangles right here. And now we're going to make this right side triangle right here. So to do that, with the wrong side facing, we need to pick up along this edge right here, seven stitches. I always like to go back and count a little bit here just to make sure I can get those seven stitches. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so yeah, I need to pick up right here. There's one. And to pick these up, we're sliding underneath that slip stitch that we made before. Wrapping around and pulling out. I like to slide through both pieces of the stitch. I feel like that gives me more structure in my work. Slide through both of those. Let's go back and see. So here is the seven from the last rectangle. And I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. We need to pick up one more right there to make that seven. Okay, so I've picked up those seven stitches and that is considered row one. We're gonna turn our work. Now we are on row two. Row two of the right side triangle. And for row two, we just simply knit seven. So I've got seven stitches, uh, now we turn. So now we're slipping one because we're creating the edge where we'll pick up stitches later. And we purl four. Okay, so we've slipped the first stitch and we have purled five stitches. Now what we're going to do is knit these last two stitches together. Now we are on the wrong side of the row and we're knitting these last two stitches together instead of purling. The reason for that is going to be giving us this edge that has this little bump on it. It's just a decorative touch on the edge of our work. So I'm going to knit those two together like that and then we turn again. So now we are knitting these six stitches. And turn. So we're on row five. We slip the first one. We're going to purl three. And knit those last two together. You always know on the wrong side, the last two stitches are in knit two together. And then turn. And that's when you're working on the right side triangle. The last two stitches are going to be a knit two together. Okay. We should have, we are on row six. We should have five stitches and we do. So now we can just knit those five stitches. and turn. Now we're on seven, we're gonna slip the first one. Now we're going to purl two, and then the last two will be knit together. So slip one, purl two, and knit those last two together. 
And now we are down to four stitches on our needle. And we have turned to the right side of the work. We are on row eight and we are knitting these four stitches. And turn again. And we're going to slip one, purl one, and then knit two together. We're down to three stitches. Turn back to the right side of the work, and we are going to knit these three stitches. Turn again. And now there's only three stitches. So we slip the first one and we knit these last two together. And turn. We'll knit these two stitches. And turn again. So this is the last one. We only have two stitches, so we are going to knit these two stitches, last two stitches together. And now we have finished the right side triangle. So this triangle looks a little strange right here, but let's show you what it looks like on the scarf. This is the triangle right here that we just finished. So now we've just finished tier one and we're ready to start tier two. So I'm going to get my pattern ready for tier two. And we have two rectangles that we're going to be showing you how, that I'm going to be showing you how to make in tier two. Now this tier consists of four rectangles. The first one is a little different than the other three because we are connecting to this triangle below, but we'll walk you through on how to do that. We want to reset our row counters back to zero. Get my magnet for my pattern keeper right in the right spot. So the first rectangle. We have the one stitch from the triangle before. We're gonna slide that to our right hand needle. That counts as the first stitch in this set of seven stitches. So now I just need to pick up six stitches from this edge where we slipped those stitches. So I've got one, one, two, three, four, five, six. So, okay, I'm gonna do that. To do that, I slide it through that slip stitch, wrap around and bring it out. I've got four, five, six, seven. Okay, that's row one. I've got seven stitches on my needle now. Turn our work, and we're going to purl those seven back. That's uh, row two is going to be our purl seven. And then turn. So to give you some reference, I want to go back to the scarf now that we've got the first couple of rows in there. We have just made this triangle. Now we've picked up these stitches and now we're making this rectangle right here, rectangle number one right there. So we are on row three. We have the right side facing us. We're going to slip the first stitch and we are going to knit until one stitch before the gap. Now I have, remember the gaps from before, we have another gap here. We need to cinch this gap up and we are doing what's called an SS 
K, which is a slip, slip, knit. So let me show you how that's done. You slip one, slip two, slide them back to the other needle. I like to leave my needle in the stitches because I'm going to be knitting through the back loop by wrapping my yarn around and bringing it through. That is how you do an SSK. Now we finish that row and we are on row four. Now row four is going to repeat, be a repeat of row two. For the rest of this section, we're just going to continue repeating rows two and three until basically we run out of connecting stitches. We just finished the tier two first rectangle. Now we're ready to pick up the stitches and start uh, the second rectangle. I have my stitch marker here. At this point, the sections will be separated on their own, but if you still feel comfortable using the stitch markers, go ahead and slide that one over. And now we're gonna pick up seven stitches along these slip stitches right here, just like we've done before. Slide our needle in, wrap the yarn around, pull it through. We need seven of these. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. I like to kind of count backwards from where I'm gonna end up because then that gives me an idea to make sure that I do have all of those stitches on there. And it's kind of a clue in to make sure that I did the section below properly um, to make sure that I have all of those slip stitches there to pick up. And it gives it a nice neat edge. So if you go through and you find that you don't have enough slip stitches to pick up your seven stitches that you need to start this new rectangle, um, if, the, if the square or rectangle underneath of it looks okay to your eye, go ahead and just pick up from another area to get that extra stitch in there. If it doesn't look right, now's the time to go ahead and rip back. Because this is modular knitting, it's easier to frog that little section back and go back and re-knit it when you find the issue. Um, it's kind of fun about the modular knitting part because you're just doing one little section at a time and then you can put it away for a while and when you come back it's so easy to find your spot because you're just doing one little rectangle at a time. Okay so row one on the second rectangle is done. That's me picking up the seven stitches. So click and get my magnet in the right place. Now I'm on row two. I'm turning and like we've done before, we're just gonna purl these seven stitches back. So this is row two is purl seven. And then turn. Now we're on row three. And like we've done before, you're going to start to see a pattern as you go through here. You slip one, and we're going to knit five. And then we're going to SSK, which is the slip, slip, knit these two stitches together, and it's gonna close up our gap and join this one to this one. So slip, slip, knit through the back loop. That's my SSK, now I'm gonna turn. So now you know how to do tier one and tier two. Go ahead and continue those until the scarf is your desired length. Mine was about 60 inches. You wanna make sure that you finish on a tier one and then meet me back here and I'll show you how to finish up the scarf. Okay, so I've worked up a little sample here so that now I can show you how to do the top triangles and finish off our scarf. Make sure that you have just finished a tier one before you start this. To start off, we have the one stitch here that we're gonna slide over to our working needle and now I need to pick up six stitches along this edge here to get back to my magic number of seven. Slide through here. And this triangle is actually going to fill in the gaps at the top and bind off at the same time. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven right through here. 
Okay, so I've picked up those seven stitches, and that is row one. Let me get my counter back to where it needs to be. And so now we are on row two. We've turned our work, and we are going to purl those seven stitches. And turn for three. Now here's where the magic happens. So this is the triangle, the one stitch I started, I just picked up along this edge. I'm making this top triangle here. And as I go, I'm binding off around the top here. So then this is just to give you some orientation here. Okay. We are on row three, and the first step is knit two together. By knitting these two together, I am decreasing one now I'm going to knit four, and I have this gap again, and I'm on the front, the right side of our work, so it's an SSK, so that's slip, slip, and knit through the back loop, and I'm combining this new piece of work with this rectangle over here. We're going to turn, and we're down to six stitches now. We're going to purl these six stitches back. And we're building up this short row triangle. And short row is basically a term that we use in knitting when you're going back and forth, turning, um, not working through all of your stitches, but by going back and forth, knitting on one side, purling on the other side, you're building up fabric, and that's another term called short row. Okay, so now we are on row five. Again, we are going to knit two together, so now we are decreasing another stitch on that side, and then we knit three, and Join these two together with an SSK, which is slip, slip, and then we're knitting through the back loop, and turn again. Now we have five stitches on our needle. We're going to purl those five back. and turn again. Now you can start to see, as I pull this out, we're closing up the top of our scarf right there. Say we are on row seven, so we are knit two together, knit two, and slip, slip, knit, SSK, and turn, and we're down to four stitches. We're going to purl those four stitches. Turn, and again, Knit two together, knit one, join these two together with an S, S, K, slip, slip, knit, turn, and we have three stitches left. We're going to purl those three. And turn. And knit these two together. And then we're going to slip, slip, knit, and turn. And we're going to purl these two.
and turn. Okay, so now I have two stitches here from this triangle and two stitches here from this rectangle. This time I'm going to slip one, then I'm going to do my SSK. and turn. I'm going to purl those two. And turn. So now I'm down to three stitches. This is where I'm going to finish off this top triangle. Slip one. We're going to do our SSK here to combine those two. And now I'm just going to simply pass this stitch over the first stitch to bind this stitch off. And I have one stitch remaining. And I finish that first triangle. So now you start off with row one by picking up the six additional stitches here so that you're back to seven, the magic number. Repeat rows one through 15 until you have finished all the way across your work and you have all of your triangles finished. Okay, so now we have finished off our top triangles. This is my little sample here. We want to go ahead and block this out. I want to show you how it'll change. This is freshly knitted and this has been blocked. So you can kind of look at this and see how this one lays flat. It's more spread out. This one is closer together and more bumpy. So the size and the measurement of your scarf is going to change through this process. So we have it one width here. Once it gets wet and we block it, and I'll show you how to do that in a second, it's going to change size again. And then after it's been blocked and it dries, it's the fibers are going to come back together and your size is going to change again. The most important, pro, uh, the most important thing in this project is the length of your scarf. You want to knit it the size that is desired for the person that you're making it for. For me, mine was about 60 to 68 inches, just long enough that I could wear it around my neck and drape it over once. But that is, there's plenty of yarn in this ball of yarn to make it even longer if you would like. Okay, so now let's get to the blocking part of it. This is the part where we're going to give it a little bath, let the fibers relax and do their thing and make it nice and pretty. To do that, you want a bowl of water that is about room temperature. You're going to go ahead and add your wool wash in, um, some kind of mild and gentle soap. Now for your scarf, you really want it to soak for 15 to 30 minutes so that the water gets into all of the little air pockets that are in your yarn. Um, for me, I'm just going to, this, this piece is so small that I'm just going to kind of press it in here. When you are soaking the fibers in the water, you do not want to wring it or cause any agitation because then you could have a chance of felting, um, which is going to change the structure of your fiber. Um, the idea here is to give the yarn a bath so that your stitches relax and bloom and become nice and even. And um, we don't want to disrupt that process by the wringing. Okay, so let's say we've set this in here for about 15 minutes. And now you must, how do we get the water out if we're not wringing it? Well, we're gonna gently squeeze it and squeeze it. And then I have a towel here. Oops, I got that back in the water a little bit. There we go, squeeze. And you lay out a towel. And then you lay out your project. See, it's already changing in size, look at that. It's, it's going to keep changing as we go along. Lay that on the towel, bring it in, and we're going to use the towel to wick out any of the extra water. And so we're just going to push. Okay, and then there we go. So to block it, what we want to do is get out our blocking mats. This is a um, the blocking mat here, and these are called blockers. And we use these to stretch everything out. You can see how pliable this is. It, it, I always kind of um, 
use the example of molding clay. When when wool is wet, and this is silk, this is a silk wool blend. When it's wet, you kind of have that feeling of clay. At this point, you can really shape it and mold it to where you want. So we want to bring this down to put the blockers in to hold it into place here. And they just slide right into this mat. It's fantastic. Okay. Now you can use your measuring tape to make sure that you're getting it even all the way across. That's the most important thing. You don't want one, one portion of it really wide and then it go back in and then wide. The idea of this for checking your measurement is to make sure that it's even. Okay, so I've got 10 inches about there. So I wanna just check in random spots and pull it out to be about 10 inches all the way down. Keeping in mind that yours might differ a little bit by your gauge, but you just wanna make sure that it's on your project that you get the same width all the way down. Okay, then you can put your blockers in to hold it into place. This, it took mine about eight hours to dry. So I just set it out here. And then once it's dry, let me use a smaller one. I like this pack because it has two different size picks to use or blockers to put in here. That looks about even to me. Like I said, it's like clay. You can make it pull out and and again, the sizes are going to change. Once it dries, the fibers are going to come back in. But as long as you're consistent, see right there, that one's in a little bit. I'm going to grab another one of these smaller ones and bring it back out. You just want your scarf to be even all the way down. All right, here we go. So let that dry overnight. And once it's done, you'll be able to wrap it around and wear it. And enjoy your scarf. Thank you for joining me for the Pure Fantasy Interlac Scarf Knit Along. I had so much fun writing this pattern and it was a complete joy to show you how I knit this scarf and to take you step by step through the process. If you have any questions or comments, please go ahead and leave us a message and we'll get back to you. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click the bell to be notified the next time we have a video. Thank you so much and happy knitting.